So I was sitting on the can just the other day a Browsing Amazon.co.uk When an affordable mic kit caught my eye And not just because the scissor arm was finished in a ballin' ass white Okay, that was actually the biggest reason I mean, aside from the price It's pretty cool, right? Can't lie A microphone kit for just $20.99 Surely couldn't be worse than an MXL99 T I mean you know, the 990 sucks. How's it? I'm too white for this, aren't I? Hello everyone out there in the YouTubes. My name is Cadence. This is my corner. My coffee is in my tummy because I just tried to record this video and then I ran out of space on my memory card. So, sorry about that. This is the star of today's show, but more specifically, actually, this microphone along with the entire kit that you saw in the intro of this video if you managed to make it past that intro, which it seems you have since you're here. So excellent, excellent. I do want to talk about this entire kit, but before we do that, let's focus on the microphone. This is the newer NW-700. Let's just call it, let's just call it the 700 from now on, right? It sounds kind of cool, maybe. It's a cardioid condenser microphone. Um, to me, it looks like it's an electric ca uh, condenser capsule that's in the basket there, but I'm no expert. It's just kind of kind of what it visually looks like uh, looks like to me when you take the microphone apart. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something to keep in mind. An electric condenser capsule is charged by um, a material in the capsule um, instead of uh, externally by phantom power. Although this microphone still requires phantom power probably because of the other componentry in there. Um, I'm sure you could drive this microphone off a very low voltage though, so there you go. Um, but don't quote me on the fact that it may be an electric condenser microphone, because uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. It's very light, it's very small, the materials making up the body are pretty thin in their profile, so I wouldn't drive, I would, you know, I wouldn't run this over with a truck, not that I'd run any microphone over with a truck, but this probably wouldn't survive that, so just just saying, it's not the toughest microphone in the world. Um, but let's talk about how it sounds real quick. So, <laughs> the sound in this video is completely untouched, except for perhaps a limiter on the output just to control the final volume of the video. So, you can judge for yourself, but I'll give you my thoughts. I think this microphone sounds very mid-rangey. It, it's almost like a telephone sound in a way, although a little more extended on, on both the high end and the low end, and not as distorted in a way. Um, the self-noise of the microphone is quite apparent. Um, it's fairly loud, but it's not completely off, right? It's not so obtrusive that you couldn't use it. I would not use this for any kind of professional or semi-professional work, but if you're starting a YouTube channel, or if you want to start streaming on Twitch, for instance, this microphone kit is actually a really great buy. And yeah, the microphone isn't the greatest, but it will get you started. And this, this is where I want to kind of move on to the rest of the, of the kit. We might get back to the mic briefly, but I want to talk about the kit. So what's in the kit that I bought specifically? Well, you got the scissor arm that this microphone is sitting on right now. Um, and then, excuse me, you have a, a gooseneck pop filter with your standard kind of a double layered nylon pop filter here that's like five to six inches in diameter. That's like 12 to 15 centimeters or so. A little bit large for this size microphone, but there you go. You now have a double layered decent pop filter. Um, in addition to that, the kit also comes with a little windscreen you can pop on the mic. Um, so that's that, it's kind of thin and doesn't do much. And to be honest, this microphone is already relatively uh, 
um, resistant to pops. Now I'm trying to speak directly into it right now and, uh, and actually make it pop a little bit. And I am managing to make it pop a little bit, but it's not, it's not much actually. It's not that much, not bad. Which has to do with uh, how the condenser is, uh, excuse me, how the capsule is designed, as well as the fact that there is a layer of foam behind the microphone grill here uh, to stop pops a little bit. So it's fairly resistant to pops right out of the box, which might be a big benefit to you. Um, so what did we get to? I talked about the kit, talked about the microphone a little bit. I guess uh, the point of this microphone kit, um, and, and I've kind of thought about this a little bit, uh, about, about upgrade paths and how much money you need to start out with this kind of stuff and what you need to get. I think this kit has a, a specific kind of spot that it fits in. Um, in, in terms of uh, who it's for. So if you want to start streaming on Twitch or making YouTube videos or you need just a decent microphone for something and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go out and spend 30 bucks on a mic stand and 100 bucks on a microphone and 100 bucks on an audio interface and maybe a pop filter too and all kinds, all these different things you need, right? What you could do is instead go out and buy a $100 audio interface, a proper piece of hardware, right, that you can use later down the road. And then you buy this microphone kit along with it. And keep in mind, you will need to buy an XLR cable because there is a cable that comes with this kit, but it's an XLR to mini jack three and a half millimeter. I haven't used mine for anything yet. I'm just don't just don't just get a nice regular high quality XLR to XLR pop it into a decent audio interface like a Scarlett 2i2, it's a very popular interface, and you now have uh, a mic stand, a pop filter, a microphone, an interface. You can now upgrade your microphone down the road uh, and have all the stuff you need uh, to keep going. So with that said, um, the kit isn't of the highest quality, of course. Um, when it comes to the sand, there are actually some things that I like about it a lot, and then there are a, a, a few quirks with it um, in terms of uh, uh, quality control, build quality, whatever you want to call it. So mainly the thing I'll show it on, on I'll show it on the second camera here. When I these these two intersecting, these, these two these two uh, what do you, what would you call these? <laughs> these these straight structures. <laughs> they meet here uh, at this elbow almost, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh yeah, and this is loose, so I can move this around. And they're a little bit too long, so if you move this down. No? It kind of grinds against the other one. I guess they've grinded against each other to the uh, to the point now where they've kind of worn each other down a little bit. But in the beginning when I got this stand, when I do this kind of movement, right, what would happen is, yeah, one, one, one would kind of grind against the other until it kind of snapped into the new position, um, which is just because they haven't been, uh, they haven't been cut quite short enough so that they don't scrape against each other. But I'm sure there are lots of little variances in uh, the various the various things in this microphone kit, depending on just which one you get, um, uh, right? The microphone as well, I would imagine, there's a lot of variance in how they sound, how much background or how much self noise they produce, so on and so forth, because it is a very, very affordable Chinese product. I don't think quality control and keeping it all within a certain standard is really that important. It's just, let's make something and if it works, we'll send it off, um, which is entirely what I'd expect at this price point. Um, but the scissor arm is surprisingly good overall. I actually like the mechanism up here for, um, for fastening uh, microphones onto it, essentially. So what you have, you got this knob here, right? And you loosen it and what happens is, and I'm holding the microphone in my hand right now, <laughs> what happens is these two little metal plates here. They're kind of supposed to be holding this uh, rod here, right? So what you do is you line them up or whatever. Let me give, my, give myself a little more cable here. Probably switch to the camera mic as I'm doing this. Uh, if I could line these up proper here, give me a sec. There we go, all right? We insert the rod in there. Her <laughs> her, that's what she said. <laughs> and then we can tighten this around the rod so that these two metal plates grip the rod really tightly. And there you go. And this gives you an opportunity to kind of uh, place your microphone pretty much exactly how you want it to. Um, I wouldn't put extremely heavy microphones onto this stand, but it, I have had some heavy ones on here, including uh, 
the SC2200A Mark II that we talked about last time with the whole getup and everything, and that worked fine. Um, I have a feeling that this plastic knob here will snap one day. Um, but for now, this is actually working surprisingly well, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the kit overall. So, as we touched on before, um, this is a kit for people who want to uh, get, get a decent uh, setup going in terms of audio and who don't have a lot of money right now, but they're willing to compromise so that they can upgrade later. So you go out and you buy a good audio interface, buy this microphone kit and a decent XLR cable, and you have everything you need to get started, uh, except for your computer, but I hope you have one of those already. Uh, yeah, otherwise you kind of need to, need to buy one of those as well. Anyway, I wanted to give you guys a quick sample of what this microphone can sound like if you know what you're doing in terms of post-processing. And uh, I was wondering if you guys would be interested in me making a video where I uh, go through some of the steps that, uh, that I would go through to kind of tighten up the sound of this microphone because it is, as said, very mid-rangey, almost telephone-like in its, in its uh, uh, audio reproduction, the quality of the reproduction of the audio. What am I saying? You know what I'm saying. You can do a lot with post-processing. Uh, it's not going to, you know, you can polish a turd as much as you want, but I don't think this is a turd. This is kind of just a step above a turd, you know. It's a product that's actually worth paying money for, um, but only really by virtue of being part of this kit that you can use to, uh, to upgrade stuff in your arsenal later on. Um, so... I guess that's all I have to say about the newer dash and uh, the newer NW dash 700 diddle do thing. Um, it's uh, it's a good starting point and uh, a great upgrade path that you can buy into. And uh, next time I want to show you guys how you can use post processing to get the most out of your newer NW 700 or perhaps some other super let's be honest low quality microphone. Thank you so much for checking out this video. My name is Cadence. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.